Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are keeping well. So, I am Priyanka Singh and I am your science teacher. Today, I am here to start with the chapter 11 that is reproduction in plants. So, let's start. The production of new individuals from their parents is known as reproduction. In fact, reproduction is one of the most important characteristics of living organisms. This process varies from one group of living organisms to another. Some animals like birds, reptiles and insects lay eggs from which young ones hatch out. Females of some animals give birth to young ones. For example, female cat gives birth to kittens. Female dog gives birth to puppies. Female human gives birth to infants. Some plants bear flower which form seeds and these seeds give rise to new plants. There are different modes of reproduction in plants which we shall learn in this chapter. Modes of reproduction in plants. Plants reproduce or multiply in the following two ways namely asexual reproduction sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction in plants. The production of new plants from a single parent without the involvement of gametes is called asexual reproduction. Since to fusion of gametes involve no seeds are formed in asexual reproduction. Thus in asexual reproduction new plants are obtained from single parent without the production of seeds. They are exactly identical to the parent plant. Sexual reproduction in plants. The production of new plant from the existing parent by the fusion of their gametes is called sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction in plants, the fusion of male gametes with female gametes leads to the formation of seeds. These seeds can then germinate to form plants. So, in sexual reproduction, new plants are obtained from existing plant through seeds. Most of the flowering plants reproduce by the method of sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction in plants. Different methods of asexual reproduction are self-fusion, budding, spore formation, fragmentation, regeneration, vegetated propagation and extra mile. Bacteria reproduce every 9.5 minutes. E. coli reproduces every 20 minutes. Self-fusion, splitting of a mature cell into two or more cells of the same type is called cell fusion. The splitting of a cell into more than two cells of the same type is called multiple fusion. In binary fusion, first the nucleus divides into two nuclei. The cytoplasm then divides into two parts, each containing a nucleus. Further stretching leads to the formation of the two daughter cells. These cells so form grow into mature cells and then undergo similar binary fusion. An extra mile. The bacteria which causes tuberculosis and leprosy reproduce very slowly. This makes an early diagnosis of these diseases difficult. It is the most common method of asexual reproduction in unicellular organisms such as bacteria and amoeba. Budding. Microscopic organisms such as yeast reproduce asexually by budding. In this process, a small bulb like projection comes out from the parent cell. It is called bud. The bud gradually grows and gets separated from the parent cell and forms a new yeast cell. The new yeast cell grows, matures and produces more yeast cells. So student, this is the picture which is showing the yeast cells. If this process continues for some time, a large number of yeast cells are produced in short time. Spore formation. There are many non-flower plants like fungi and bacteria, yeast, mucus, rhizopus that reproduce through spore formation 
under unfavorable conditions. The spore is a small single cell reproductive body which is covered by a thick and hard protective coating. This hard protective layer helps it to survive under unfavorable conditions such as extremely high temperature, lack of food and water etc. At the favorable conditions the thick coating breaks open and the spores germinate to produce new plants. Fragmentation and regeneration. In certain algae such as Spirogyra, the long ribbon like or filamentous body breaks up into two or more parts called fragments. The breaking of a body into one or more part is called fragmentation. Each fragment then grows into a new individual. The ability of living things to repair themselves or grow the damaged part is called regeneration. For this type of reproduction, the plant should have good power of regeneration. An extra mile. Algae grow and multiply rapidly by fragmentation. Vegetative propagation. Reproduction from vegetative parts without the help of any reproductive organ is called vegetative propagation. The plant like sugarcane, banana, ginger, rose, strawberry, potato, jasmine, bonganvilla, mint, podina and turmeric are grown by vegetative reproduction method. Many new plants can be obtained from the root stem and leaves of the parent plant vegetative propagation by modified roots roots of dahlia sweet potato and asparagus become swollen due to the food stored in them these are called root tubers so in the picture are you able to see the picture students this picture is showing root tubers of sweet potato and dahlia an extra mile all the plants obtained from a plant by vegetative propagation are exact copies, clones of the parent plant. The plants raised by vegetative propagation bear flowers and fruits earlier than those produced from seeds. When left in the soil, new plants are produced from these roots. Vegetative propagation by stem. The stem of certain plants are very efficient means of propagation such as subaerial stem like runners, suckers, stolons. For example, common grass, doom, strawberry, mint, chrysanthemum and water hyacinth. Runners are side shoot stems growing from parent that is mother plant. They have buds that grow into new plantlets and then the runners die as strawberry. Underground stem like tuber, bulb, rhizome and comb. Tubers are underground stems. They are oval and round shaped structures storing food, starch as potato. Potato tubers have scaly leaves bearing the bud in their exiles which are called eyes. They develop into aerial shoots. They can be seen during rainy season in the potato stored at your home. Bulb is a bulb shaped structure made up of scaly leaves that store food such as in onion, garlic and lily. These bulbs have buds. Onion and garlic bulbs germinating at your house when stored during rainy season. Rhizome is a stem that grows horizontally through the soil. It is irregular in shape and swollen with food. They have scaly leaves and auxiliary buds. So children are you all able to see these pictures? This is the picture of potato tuber, ginger, garlic and onion. Underground stems for vegetation propagation. These buds give rise to new plantlets. For example, ginger that is adrak, turmeric that is haldi, fern etc. 
Corn is a short oval thick stem and swollen with stored food. It has several buds which give rise to plants when separated and grown. Example gladiolus, calocasia, crocus, etc. Vegetative propagation by adventurous buds and leaves. Leaves of certain plants such as bryophyllum contains adventurous buds in their notches located on the margins. These buds develop into new plant when these are grown on the soil. Artificial method of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is a simple, fast and less expensive method of plant propagation. It is therefore commonly used in horticulture and agriculture. The techniques used are stem cutting, layering grafting and tissue culture. Stem cutting. In this method, cutting of a healthy young branch of a plant having leaf buds is planted in the moist soil. Cutting develops roots and grows into a new plant. This method is used to propagate plants like, like bougainvillea, chameli, rose and sugar cane. An extra mile. Plants with fleshy stems such as cacti produce new plants fall on the ground. Layering. In this method, a lower branch of the plant is bent to the ground and covered with moist soil. After some time, roots sprout out from the branch and produce new plantlets. These plantlets are separated from the parent plant and made to grow as new plant. Jasmine, bougainvillea, etc. can be propagated by this method. Grafting. Grafting is a common method used in horticulture to develop new varieties of ornamental plants and fruit trees. In this method, a bud or cutting with buds of one plant called the scion is kept over the cut stem of a rooted plant called the stalk. The scion and the stalk are then firmly tied together. The care is to be taken that stalk has an extensive root system under the soil. After some time, the tissues of the stalk and scion join together to form one plant. The stalk supplies the essential nutrients to the scion. Grafting is a common method to develop new varieties of rose, guava, mango, lemon and orange. An extra mile. The cutting of the desired plant is called scion and the rooted plant into which scion has been fixed is known as stalk. Advantages of grafting Plants, flowers and fruits of desired quality can be obtained. New varieties can be developed. Plants which cannot be grown by cutting from seeds can be developed quickly by grafting. Tissue culture. In this method, a small piece of tissue is cut off from the top of a plant. This is then placed in an artificial nutrient medium containing hormones under aseptic, that is, free from any infection conditions. The piece of tissue grows into an unorganized and undifferentiated mass of tissue called callus. The callus is then transferred to another nutrient medium containing plant hormones when it multiplies and differentiate into small plantlets. These plantlets are then transferred to moist soil for further growth. Orchids, chrysanthemum, asparagus and many other plants can now be grown by this method. Advantages of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is rapid, easy and cheap method of plant propagation. Such plants take less time to grow. They bear flowers and fruits early. The new plants are exact copies of the parent plant. It produces a large number of plants in a short time. Plants like banana, seedless grapes, rose, 
pineapples and dahlias which do not produce seeds can only be grown vegetatively. Disadvantages of vegetative propagation By vegetative propagation, plants lose their reproductive power after a few generations. Due to loss of power to fight diseases, they are prone to infection. Plants become overcrowded at one place and face the lack of nutrients. So students, this is the picture of vertical section of a flower. Sexual reproduction. The process of reproduction in which both parent and sex cells are involved known as sexual reproduction. In this process, new plants are obtained from seeds. It has following characteristic. Fern. Both parent, male and female are involved. Second, sex cell gametes are involved in this process of reproduction. Third, the reproduction is comparatively slower than asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The plants that bear flowers during their life cycle are called flowering plants. In such plants, sexual reproduction takes place due to the flower. Hence, the reproductive part of the plant is a flower. It is a specialized shoot with limited growth. Flower, the reproductive part of a plant. A typical flower has four walls, such as a flower is said to be complete flower. A flower without any one or more than four walls is called incomplete flower. These walls are arranged one above the other. A flower having both male and female parts is called bisexual or hermaphrodite. For example, petunia, mustard, rose, china rose that is hibiscus, etc. Unisexual flower is one that has one part, either male or female. For example, corn, cucumber, papaya, etc. It may be present on same plant or on different plants. The male reproductive part of a flower stamen. Stamen is the male reproductive organ of the plant. It has two parts, a filament and an anther. The stalk of stamen is called filament and the swelling top of stamen is called anther that contains the pollen grains. Pollen grains contains the male gametes. Pollen grains appear to be yellow powder to us. The female reproductive part of a flower, pistil. Pistil is the female reproductive organ of the plant. It is made up of three parts. Stigma, style and ovary. The top sticky part of pistil is called stigma. The middle part of the pistil is called style. Style is a tube which connects stigma to the ovary. The swollen part at the bottom of pistil is called ovary. The ovary contains ovules. Ovules produce female gametes. Each ovule contains only one female gamete called egg. Mechanism of sexual reproduction in plants. The sexual reproduction in plants proceed through the following steps. Pollination. Pollination involves transfer of pollen grains from anther of the stamen to stigma of the pistil. Fertilization. During fertilization, the male and female gametes unite to form a zygote. Formation of seed. Here, the zygote develops into a seed. Germination of seed. In the presence of moisture, the seed swells up and the shell bursts open. Its radical goes into the soil to form the root. The plumule grows upwards and forms the shoot of the plant. These steps are described in details in the following section. Pollination The transfer of pollen grains from the another to the stigma of a flower is called pollination. Pollination can occur in two ways, self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of the same flower. It mainly takes 
प्लेस इन बाय सेक्शुअल फ्लॉस वेयर द एंथर एंड स्टिग्मा मेच्योर एट द सेम टाइम देयरफॉर एंथम ऑन मेच्योरिटी प्रोड्यूसेस पोलन व्हिच गेट्स कैरीड टू द स्टिग्मा ऑफ सेम फ्लॉ बाय वेरियस एजेंट्स इट टेक प्लेस इन प्लांट्स लाइक व्हीट पीस एटसेट्रा In cross pollination the pollen grains from one flower are carried to the stigma of another flower of the same plant or of different plant of same species it takes place in plant like lady finger brinjal tomato hibiscus etc the process of cross pollination generally occurs in plants having bisexual flowers in such flowers the anther and stigma matures at different times therefore the pollen grains of a flower cannot fertilize the ovules of the same flower hence the pollen grains need to be carried to the stigma of another flower agents of pollination the most common agents of pollination are wind water insects pollination by wind flowers of wheat rice maize and rye and grass are pollinated by wind wind pollinated flowers have the following features they are usually white in color they do not produce nectar they produce small and light pollen grains in large quantity to be carried away by wind pollination by water flowers of a water borne plant may release pollen grains from its anther in water these pollen grains are carried to the stigma of the flower of another plant of the same kind by water currents causing pollination the plants such as sea grass hydrilla and valis neria gets pollinated through water pollination by insects insects like honey bees wasps moth and butterflies with its flowers for nectar while collecting nectar some pollen grains stick to the body of these insects when these insects visit another flower the pollen grains are brushed off some of which fall on the stigma fertilization when the pollen grains land on the stigma of a flower a pollen tube grows out from the pollen grain This pollen tube travels through the style and reaches the ovule via the ovary. Two male gametes from the pollen grain then travel down the pollen tube. After reaching the ovule, one male gamete unites with the female gamete to form a zygote is called fertilization. The zygote is single celled which divides many times to form an embryo. The second male gamete fuses with another cell in the ovule to form the endosperm this provides nourishment to the growing embryo formation of seed after the fertilization the petal stem in style and stigma of the flower falls off the sepal rises up and holds on the ovule only the ovary remains it contains the fertilized ovule each fertilized ovule contain a zygote the zygote then begins to divide and form an embryo embryo contains one or two cotyledons which store food for future the fertilized and developed ovule containing embryo is called a seed formation of fruit with time the seed hardens and dries the ovary wall may harden and become support as in poppy or it may become fleshy and succulent as in plums or tomatoes the whole ovary after fertilization grows to form the fruit germination of seeds Most of the seeds do not germinate immediately after their formation. They remain dormant, reset, sleep for some time. They begin to grow only under favorable conditions. The seeds must get moisture and oxygen. Most seeds need warmth as well. When all the conditions are favorable, germination begins. The emerging out of a seeding from a seed is called germination. 
various stages of seed germination intake of water by seed when the seed are sown in the soil they absorb water from the soil this intake of water helps the enzymes to become active in seeds the enzymes digest the stored food in cotyledons and make it soluble the soluble food then diffuses into embryo radical and plumule it allows them to grow growth of radical the radical growth first and comes out of the seed it grows into the soil it begins to absorb water and minerals from the soil growth of plumule the plumule grows later it becomes out of the seed and grows upward into the shoot and leaves till now the embryo depends on the reserve food stored in the cotyledons after germination and formation of seedling it photosynthesizes is one radical forms root system and plumule forms shoot system gradually the seedling grows into a plant after some time a plant may form a tree after a year or so depending upon the type of seedling artificial pollination the population on the earth is increasing as a result we require more food the land area on the earth is limited so the only way to increase crop production is to develop better quality seeds crop The improvement in the quality of seeds or crops is done by the process of hybridization or artificial pollination. Artificial pollination is carried out as follow. First, select flowering plants with the desired characteristics. Second, remove pollen grains from the ripe anthers of a plant. Third, disperse or spread these pollen grains on the mature stigma of the other plant fourth cover the pollinated flowers with the polythene bags until bulbs or seeds are produced the pollinated flowers are covered with the polythene bags to prevent pollination by other sources fifth the seeds are collected kept safely and are sown in the next season sixth The plants so obtained are hybrid of the plants taken for pollination earlier. The whole process of producing better seeds or crops from the existing plants or seeds is called hybridization. The hybrid seeds are high yielding disease resistant and are of short duration. Dispersal of seeds the scattering of seeds over a large area away from the mother plant by the agents of dispersal is called the dispersal of seeds seed dispersal is beneficial to the plants because it provides the following advantages to the plants first seed dispersal prevents overcrowding of plant in an area second seed dispersal prevents the competition for water minerals and sunlight among the same kind of plants third seed dispersal helps the plants to grow in new places or new areas let us study how various types of seeds are dispersed by different agents of dispersal dispersal by wind Some seed dispersed by wind have wings that act like gliders as in the drumstick seeds and maple seeds some seeds have tuft of hair that act like parachute as in cotton dandelion and the madar seeds dispersal by water the seeds and fruits of plants which grow in water or near it are dispersed by water fruits that are dispersed by water have spongy or fibrous waterproof outer coats example coconut and lotus dispersal by animals certain seeds are dispersed to far off places by certain animals they can be carried by various means for example some fruits develop hooks on their surface by which they get attached to the fur of animals and carried away the distant spaces before they are rubbed off from their bodies and fails to the ground the fruits of gokuru xanthium 
and urena are dispersed by animals due to their hooked surface. Sometimes animals eat seeds along with the fruits. These seeds remain undigested and pass out with faces at some other distant place. So it's time for readers digest. The production of new individuals from their parents is known as reproduction. Plants reproduce in two ways, asexual or sexual. Splitting of a mature cell into two or more cells of the same type is called cell fusion. Reproduction from vegetative parts without the help of any reproductive organ is called vegetative productive organ of the plant. The most common agents of pollination are wind, water and insects. The improvement in the quality of seeds or crops is done by the process of hybridization or artificial pollination. So students, it's time to take your leave. So bye, we'll meet in the next session.